Hey guys, it's Dr. McJunkin. Welcome to week five of virtual learning. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a transition now and talk a little bit about uh, the first couple topics in calculus. So if you're going into AP Calc next year, uh, we're going to get a little bit of a leg up doing some initial stuff about limits. Okay. So our objective for today is to be able to find something called limits from graphs and tables, numerically and graphically. So first off, what is a limit? It's one of the what major things that we study in calculus. What is a limit? Well, the limit's really easy. It's just the y value. So y, the y value that a function approaches. So the y value that a function approaches as x approaches a certain value. So what, what, what does y get close to as x gets closer to something? So we're going to start with numerical limits, which is all about tables and plugging in values to our function. So we've got a function here, f of x equals x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. And we're going to plug in some values here. So I have x values of 1.8, 1.9, 1.99, 1.999, and 1.9999. I'm getting really, really close to the value of 2. But I'm not actually going to plug in 2. I'm just going to get really close to the value of 2. So if I plug in 1.8 into this function here, this f of x, you should be able to see that you get 6.04. You can Check these in your calculators to make sure that you're doing the correct stuff, especially with like this cubing and this division. It can be a little tricky. But you should get 6.04. For 1.9, you should get 6.51. 1.99 should give you 6.9501. 1.999 is like 6.995. And 1 6.9999. So we want to know what is the y value approaching as x is getting close to 2 here. So what do you think happens to the value of f of x as x increases towards 2? Well, f of x gets closer or approaches the value of 7. So f of x gets closer to 7 as x is getting close to 2. Okay. That's from one side, from values that were less than 2, so like 1.8, 1.9, uh, etc. What happens maybe as we go from values that are larger than 2 down to values that are close to 2 as well? So I'm going to plug in these values back into that original function of f of x. 2.2 should give me 8.04. 2.1 should give me 7.51. 2.01, 7.0501. 2.001 is 7.005, and this last one is 7.0005. So again, as I go from higher values of 2, closer and closer to 2, so as f of x decreases towards 2, well, f of x, sorry, as x decreases towards 2, f of x gets closer to 7 again. So from both sides, let's go ahead and look at both tables now. So from both sides, 1.8 up towards 2 and 2.2 down towards 2, it's getting closer to 7 from both sides. So we're going to use this new notation that looks like this. So using this proper limit notation, I'm going to use limit, which is LIM, as x approaches 2. This x arrow 2 means x approaches 2. I'm going to write down this in words in just a second. The limit as x approaches 2 of this function is equal to 7, or this expression here, where they've plugged in the f of x function value. So what does that say? Well, that says again, the limit, what you would say in words, the limit as x approaches 2, that's this part down here, the x arrow 2, of the function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 is 7. So that's what I would say. The limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 is 7. 
So let's go ahead and evaluate the function at 2, my f of x value, which is again the x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. If I evaluate this function at 2, I just plug in 2 everywhere I see x, and I would get 2 cubed, which is 8 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Well, that's just 7 over 1, or 7. If I plug in the value, it's the same thing. The function is approaching the value at that point. So the function from both sides is getting close to 7, and then actually at 2, it is equal to 7. So if I wanted to use a calculator just to kind of sketch what this looks like, I have that up here on my calculator, so hopefully we'll be able to see it. Maybe I'll put it here, and then we can sketch a little bit better. Cool. So here's the graph of the function between x equals 1.8 and 2.2. .2. And so if I wanted to sketch this briefly, going from 1.8 to 2.2, .2, 2 is in between it. And what I can see is I have a pretty nice smooth curve here going from the 1.8 to the 2.2, .2, and then right in the middle at 2, our value of 7 occurs. So we kind of have this increasing line where this point was 27 at 2.2 .2 from our table above we know it's at 8.04 and from our tables above as well 1.8 is at 6.04 so it's just an increasing function that goes through this point here from the left hand side it approaches the value of 7 from the right hand side it approaches the value of 7 and actually at that point it is 7 as well cool so limits are pretty simple. Let's go ahead and see what can happen wrong with some limits and what can be kind of weird and funky with limits. So let's get this zoomed in again. I'm looking at the same function as above, <clears throat> but now I want to know what happens as x approaches 1. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to fill out these uh, tables pretty quickly, and then we're going to see what happens. So. Pause it if you want to to check your values with me. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and put the values for this function that I've already calculated on my other sheet of paper. Cool. So 2.44, 2 2.701, 2 2.9701, 2.997, 2.9997. So what's happening as f of x to f of x as x increases, increases towards 1? Well, f of x is approaching, so it approaches 3. It's getting really, really close to 3. 2.9997 is pretty close to 3. From the other side, 1.2 all the way down towards 1, I get 3.64, 3.31, 3.0303. And from this side, you can also see that our function f of x approaches 3. So it's getting from above 3, closer to 3 as well. Cool. So you can see that if I use these tables, let's go ahead and look at both of them, I can see that from the left-hand side, from values that are lower than 1 up to 1, my function approaches 3. So, and from x values that are greater than 1 down towards 1, my function decreases towards 3. So on both sides, it's approaching 3. Both, uh, both sides there. So I want to write a formal limit statement for this relationship using correct notation and then write it in words. Go ahead and try this out looking at the last example, and then I'll put the answer here in just a second. OK, so hopefully you've tried this out. This one, we're looking at the limit, so I want LIM again. But our x value now is approaching 1. So I want x arrow 1. I'm approaching 1. And I'm looking at this function. If you put f of x, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and write the whole function to be precise here. This particular function, this limit value is 3. So that's my limit notation for this example. And what that means is the limit as x approaches 1 of this function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 is 3. Cool. Uh, last time, we saw that our limit value was just actually equal to the function value at that point. 
So let me see if I can keep this limit here, but then also say, hey, let's do what we did last time and evaluate my function at one to see if I get the same value. Well, I would get one cubed minus one over one minus one. The issue here is I get zero over zero. My denominator is zero, so my function f of one is undefined. And here's the issue, here's the kind of cool thing about limits and functions. Limits don't care about what the function value is at that particular point. They just care about what value we approach. They just care about what value we approach. So the limit still exists here. The limit is three but the function value is undefined at that point. There's a hole in the graph. So if you looked at a graph here, if I kind of want to sketch a little bit, if, as I approach one here, I would get a hole in my graph. So my function is undefined at that point, but the limit still exists because from both sides, I'm still approaching a y value of three. I just have a hole in the graph at that point. So the limit doesn't care about holes in the graph. The limit can exist even if it's undefined at that point. So that's a key point that maybe I'll write down here at the bottom. Limits, let's I'll actually move it over so you can see better. Limits can exist even if the function is undefined at the point. Even if the function is undefined at that point. Cool, limits just care about what you approach, not actually what's happening at that point. Sometimes they match if there's not a hole in the graph, but if there's holes in the graph, we can have a limit, yet not have a function defined at that point. So we've been graphing a little bit. So let's go ahead and look about graphical limits too. If I don't wanna make a huge table and I have a graph of a piecewise function, uh, let's go ahead and get this introduction here at the top. <clears throat> okay, so limits graphically. In order for a limit to exist, the limit as x approaches the value to exist, the function must be approaching the same y value as the x approaches some value from the left or the right side. So c is just like as x approaches like one or two or three. So as x approaches some value c from the right and the left, you have to approach the same value for the function to, to have a limit. When we saw on our graph here from the last time, we saw that our limit existed because from the left and the right, our function approached the same value, even though there wasn't a value there. And also on the last, on the first example, we saw that our limit approached the same value from both the right and the left-hand side. So we have to have both of those things be true in order to get a limit. If that's not true, if we approach two different values, we say the limit does not exist, or d and e, as x approaches some value. We can talk about one-sided limits as well. So if we want the limit as we approach from the left-hand side, or some numbers that are smaller than the value that we care about, we say the limit as x approaches some value from the left, which is this little negative sign here. It's kind of hard to see. So the limit as x approaches some value from the left, I put a little negative sign there. That's the left-hand limit. And a right-hand limit is asking us, what's the value of f of x approaching as x approaches some value from the right-hand side? And there's a little plus sign right there. In order for the full limit to exist, the limit from the left, limit as x approaches some value with a negative sign, has to equal the limit from the right, the positive sign one, and then we say that that whole limit exists and is equal to that value that they both approach. So they have to approach the same value. That's a lot of information to take in. Let's go ahead and see some graphical limit examples and see actually how easy it is to kind of just read these off the graph. So I want to look at these graphs and find some information here. Cool, looks like I can fit this first example here. Example one, I've got a piecewise function. I've got this linear function. I've got a hole in the graph. I've got a filled in circle here. I've got this function. Obviously, we're gonna be talking about what's happening at one because that's the interesting stuff. So it's hard to see. So I'll go ahead and, this is a negative sign here. 
the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. That means if I look at x uh, at 1, I want to approach from the left, so I want to go to the left a little bit and see, okay, here's my function. If I go along the line of this function, what function value am I approaching as I approach from the left? Well, my y value approaches this value of 1. I know there's a hole there, but limits don't care. It's just getting closer to 1 as x gets closer to 1 from the left-hand side. As x approaches 1 from the right-hand side, the little plus sign here, the function approaches what? Well, I go to 1 again, but now I want to approach from the right-hand side. So go to the right a little bit, figure out where your function is at that point. I'm on this line. And what's happening as x gets closer and closer to 1 from the right-hand side? I'm going this direction. Well, my y value is getting closer to 2. So from the left-hand side, I'm getting closer to 1. From the right-hand side, I'm getting closer to 2. These numbers are not the same. If my left and right-hand limit don't have the same number, my full limit does not exist. OK. So here I don't have a limit because there's a jump in the graph. There's something bad going on. There's a jump here. So I don't have a limit. Uh, my function value at 1. If I'm looking at 1 here, how can I determine which of these two is my function value? Well, I look for which one has the closed circle. The closed circle means that I am a defined there. The open circle means I'm undefined there. So my function at 1 is defined to be 2. Not 1 because there's an open circle there. It's defined up here at 2. Let's go look at a little more complicated function. Let's see if I can get everything on the screen at the same time. I may have to go down for those last ones. It's OK. Let's start with the top ones here. So here's my function f of x. And I want to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. So I'm going to go to 1. I'm going to go to the left. I'm on this piece of this piecewise function. This one has three pieces. And then from the left, I'm going this direction, put a little arrow. And I see that I'm approaching my y value of 1. See if I get a different color so it's a little bit easier to see on this graph. Sure. How about the limit as x approaches 1 from the right? Well. Go to 1, go to the right. I'm up here at this piece of my graph, and I'm going this direction towards 1. Well, my value is getting closer and closer to 3. I can see that my values don't, add up, don't match up. These functions aren't approaching the same value from the right or from the left. So my full, my full limit again, my limit as x approaches 1, does not exist. If the left-hand limit, the negative 1, doesn't equal the positive one, always go DNE. My function value at 1, well, it could be either one of these two, but I'm looking for the full circle, so I'm looking at 1 here. My function at 1 is defined right here at 1. Let's see if I can look at my last two. My second to last one says the limit as x approaches negative 1. No plus or minus, just the full limit as I approach negative 1. So I'm going to go to negative 1. And I'm going to see, hey, do I approach the same value from the right and from the left? So I'm going to draw little arrows here. So from the right, my function's going up here towards 1. From the left, my function's going down here towards 1. So they are approaching the same value, and it's equal to 1. This is a called, called a continuous function right here because it's nice. There's no holes or jumps at this particular point. So it's continuous here. It's got a nice, smooth little curve. And it's just defined there to be 1, where it's approaching from both sides. The limit as x approaches 2, but from the right, there's a little plus sign here. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right, 2 from the right, well, it's going to be up here on this piece. It's going to be decreasing towards 2. And it looks like it's, increased, or it's decreasing towards this y value of 2. So my function there is getting closer to 2 as I approach from the right-hand side, or numbers that are larger than 2. And then we go towards 2. OK, that was a lot of introductory calculus stuff. We're going to be doing limits next time as well. 
with um, algebraically. So we looked at tables, we looked at graphs. We're going to look at equations next time and figure out how can we find the limits from equations. I encourage you to watch the video again, pause, take notes, um, work these examples. If you've got questions, um, ask me through email from 9.30 to 11.30 today, or I'll be online for office hours from 2.45 to 3.45. So hope to see you then. Uh, otherwise, I will see you on Friday. Have a good one, guys.